So everyone, welcome to today's Team Coach Toolkit webinar. My name is Krista Lowe, and I am joined by my colleague Yehudi Meshaninov, and we're really excited to have this session with you today about a technology and coaching that we really feel is underutilized, that using video feedback and coaching, whether you're doing one-on-one -on -one coaching or coaching a team, is super powerful, and, and unlike in other disciplines, maybe for doing sales training or presentation skills or even with sports teams, video feedback is commonly used, but our awareness is that in the coaching field, it is yet to really enter to become a staple of coaches in to coaches' toolkits. So we think this is a really exciting time. Uh, you know, obviously, video is becoming really prevalent. Uh, you know, YouTube, Facebook Live, you know, we have all these sort of forms of streaming, and so I think we're kind of moving into an age where video is ubiquitous. Uh, my six-year-old little daughter loves to watch YouTube kids and to create her own videos more than she likes to watch the studio produced stuff. So I think we're just kind of living in this interesting time where video uh, is ubiquitous. So uh, we're excited to, to have this session with you today and you know, have a conversation with you about the power of video feedback and how we're using that in our coaching practices and um, you know, to share some tips and ideas around that. We're also going to be sharing a bit about a course that we've developed for folks who want to take a deeper dive. So I think you're going to get some value out of today that you can take moving forward. And for those of you who find this interesting and want to go deeper, we're going to have an option for those of you who are interested if you want to go a bit deeper. But why don't we go ahead and uh, just begin. Again, this is a recorded webinar. So uh, we're going to have this up as a replay. For, so for those of you, I think we have 12 people calling in by phone. If you're not seeing the screen, there may be some content we covered today, which you might want to go back and take a look at. We'll be sharing a few slides, not many, and a video clip later, which we're going to watch together for a couple minutes. So if you're not able to see the screen during this session, there will be a replay available at uh, teamcoachingzone.com forward slash webinars. So with that, why don't we go ahead and kick in. I'm going to introduce Yehudi. He's going to introduce me, and uh, we can um, get it going that way. And again, feel free to hit the chat window as much as you like during the session, ask questions, make comments. We can have a lively conversation there. So I'd like to introduce my colleague, Yehudi Meshaninov. He is a team coach and a founder of a, a boutique consulting firm in New York City called Leadership Labs NY. He has both a master's degree and he's working on an inter, interdisciplinary doctorate in adult learning and organizational psychology. Uh, Yehudi has a, a real rich background. I won't get into all the details about it, but this week, is being featured on my podcast, The Team Coaching Zone. And the title of the podcast is Insights from a Millennial Team Coach. And I think you'll find it really dynamic, a really inspiring podcast. Uh, Yehudi's a really uh, dynamic, creative guy. He's doing some great coaching, team coaching and leadership coaching and leadership work with startup companies, with boutique consulting firms and family businesses. So really doing a lot of great stuff. And uh, he actually introduced me to one of his mentors, I think about six months ago, a man by the name of Barry Jens, who you'll hear a little bit more about in today's session. And I had Barry on the podcast back in episode 46, where we start talking about video feedback. There's a whole feature on that. And that introduction led to a cascade of interactions between Yehudi and I and a collaboration on uh, video feedback coaching. The final thing I'll say before I pass it over to Yehudi is that we just were at the Columbia University Coaching Conference in October where we had a special exhibit. The Team Coaching Zone was one of the platinum sponsors at the, at the conference, and uh, Yehudi and I had an interactive exhibit on video feedback coaching where participants could try it out. So I think some of you who are on the call today on the webinar were uh, attending that exhibit. So nice to see you again if, uh, if you're, you're back from rejoining us after the uh, Columbia coaching conference. So Yehudi, I'll pass it over to you to um, return the favor. Thanks, Krister. Well, I feel like Krister doesn't need an introduction, but Dr. Krister Lowe, you know, many years experience doing all sorts of facilitation, leadership development, training work, and then really niche down to focus on team coaching. And I know as a team coach, I could say that I owe a huge debt of gratitude to Krister for being someone to really shine a spotlight on this space. And over the past two years has been really focusing on what does it mean to work successfully with teams? How does coaching and consulting kind of come together 
in this new space. His podcast has featured some of the leading team coaches from all across the world. And now at this point, um, Chris is really spearheading some of the work around what team coaching looks like moving into the new 21st century workplace. And so excited to be on this webinar with you, Krister, and to introduce team coaching, the team coaching space to video feedback coaching, which is a, a really powerful tool that coaches can leverage in their coaching. And so before we jump into it, we'd love to open this up to the, everyone here on the webinar. And those of you who are able to chat in the chat box, we'd love to hear your responses. What are you guys curious about? You've all joined us for this conversation today. Are there one or two things that you're really hoping to learn from our conversation? And so uh, those of you who are able to chat in would be great to, to see some of your messages on the chat box. So we'll just wait for... Uh, a minute or so to give people a chance to chat in. Um, what are some things you're curious about? What inspired you to join the recording today? What are you hoping to get out of the session? So we have uh, one want to understand what you mean by video feedback, curious about video as it relates to team meetings, biggest barriers to leveraging video as a platform, how do have we overcome these challenges? Yep, thinking about how it could connect with using observation, how it could be done in a non-intrusive way, great point, Shira, and how it compares to shadow coaching. Is there any difference between video feedback and online session? Yep, how to provide constructive feedback mindful mindfully you know and some of this is bringing back a theme that i know got a lot of attention during the columbia coaching conference krista mentioned around both supporting and challenging as a, as a coach and walking that line between the one hand providing the support but also as coaches really challenging our clients to take bold steps forward and jonathan's asking a more general question about team coaching engagements and how if they can typically grow out of individual engagements. Okay, great. So, uh, Krista, let's, let's jump in. We have a lot, of, a lot of rich questions here to build off of, and I think our conversation today will definitely address some of these, if not all. Yeah. I think a good way to get started, Yehudi, maybe would be to share a little bit about how we both got into video feedback coaching. I know you have a, a longer history in that than, than myself, and it was through you and Barry that I got introduced to this and I've been incorporating it in my coaching, but why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got into it and how you're using it with clients today so we can, we can get this conversation started. Absolutely. So I first got introduced to video feedback as part of a leadership development seminar up at Harvard that the organization I was working with at the time had brought us all up to Boston to do some work with Barry Jens, who you'll actually see a demo with a bit later in our webinar. And I had already finished the master's in clinical psych at Columbia and thought I knew a thing or two about communication and the way I, I was relating. And yet the tremendous learning that grew out of seeing myself on video and the way Barry did it was we would do role plays. He would record them and then we'd watch them as a group. And there was something about that learning that was so powerful, the ability to see the discrepancies between how I thought I was interacting and how I was actually interacting was a real game changer for me. And so I started working with Barry, eventually got trained by him to co-facilitate and then start facilitating my own sessions and found time and time again that when I was able to use video, people were able to self-identify and to really own their behaviors and the gaps in a way that they weren't doing when we were doing other kinds of leadership development work and talking about the value of listening or um, collaborative inquiry and, and that kind of thing. And so I started getting really curious about what could that look like if I bring it into my coaching and started playing around with recording people either in real live meetings or sessions or in role plays and having them watch those tapes as part of our coaching session. And so uh, currently I would say it's definitely not the only thing that I do, but I find that whether it's working one-on-one -on -one with a leader or even with a team, whenever I'm able to capture a bit of their real behavior and get on the court with them by watching that, it's always led to much more powerful learning. And so really excited to engage other people in this conversation around how can we leverage video to bring people on the court so that they could see their own behavior and not just hear about it from our perspective, but self-identify some of the gaps as well. 
But uh, Krista, I know when we went up to Boston, you had your own experience with Barry, and we're going to be seeing some of that later. What has it been like for you? And I know you've been using it in your practice as well since then. What have you found? You know, I think I'll kind of wind back a little bit because I think for me, sort of my entree into using video really kind of goes back to my days when I was a trainer. So before becoming a coach, I really, and for most of my career actually up to date, I was making a living as a trainer. And, um, you know, oftentimes one of the sort of the, the best examples that came to me is we were doing some work at Pfizer, a pharmaceutical company. And one of the ways you would get into man could get into management at Pfizer after having been a drug rep for seven years in the field was to go into the learning and develop development function to learn how to train. And what they found was when people spend two years in training and development and learn how to stand up in front of groups and facilitate conversations, they became much better leaders because a lot of those skills are very useful, right? How do you motivate a group of people? How do you manage conflict? How do you, you know, get people engaged in dialogue in group settings? But what they found was it was taking two years for people to become good trainers. And so by the time people were getting good at training, then they moved on into the leadership positions. And so they had kind of a quality problem with their training workshops. Um, so we came in and through video feedback, putting trainers on tape, having a competency model of 20 trainer skills, we could uh, accelerate somebody's development in three to six months. So it was a super powerful technology and uh, I've seen analogs of that in training of teachers. And, you know, obviously in sports, you see the use of uh, video feedback. I've done it in presentation skills. And for some reason, when I got into coaching a number of years back, um, I just didn't see, you know, the, the, I, I didn't see it in my coach training. In my coach training with CTI, which is totally excellent, we got audio feedback where we would record sessions with our clients and we would review 20-minute segments with a supervisor and actually, I found that the most powerful you know, part of my coach training, but we never were put on tape. I think some of the coach training schools put people on tape, but I never in my coach training was introduced the idea of video as one potential form of feedback that could be super powerful. And so in meeting Yehudi and doing the podcast interview with Barry, we went up to Boston, as Yehudi was, Yehudi was mentioning, and really got into some video feedback with Barry. And you know, I've been using 360 degree feedback, psychometric instruments. I think just the self is an instrument as a coach when, when you're with clients. Um, I've done a lot of shadow coaching where, you know, I follow a leader around and I know there was a comment in the chat window about shadow coaching. All of those forms of feedback are really powerful. But I think where video feedback adds and maybe goes a little bit further is when a client sees themselves on tape it's a whole nother ball game, right? So when you see yourself in 360 feedback or a coach shares with you in shadow coaching, here's what I was observing with you in the session, it's still kind of a, a third party form of feedback. But there's something really powerful when you see yourself on tape and Barry gets into this is a discrepancy is created that our perceptions of ourselves oftentimes are really disjointed from reality and actually how we show up. And that gap between our perception and how we show up creates an incredible, incredible moments for coaching. So we did some shooting. We spent a day of video shooting with Barry. I got on tape. We did some role plays. He had me, you know, pick up a difficult conversation, and we replayed that and put it on tape and then watched it, and it just really created a really rich, you know, coaching session. And so we're going to show you a little bit of that uh, clip later in today's uh, webinar. But, you know, since then, in the last, you know, I would say four or five months, I've been really using a lot of video feedback in, in my executive coaching and team coaching. And it's really creating, I would have to say, really transformative shifts that's really creating some super big impact. And, you know, some of you may be wondering, like, how do you actually do it? Well, it can be anything from popping open a MacBook Air, which is what I tend to use in a coaching session when I'm face to face. You could do it with an iPhone. You could do it with a tablet. I was just coaching an executive the other day on Skype with a software called the Call Recorder where I actually recorded us. He was practicing getting ready for going for an interview for a promotion. And we recorded, you know, doing a mock interview. And he thought he had done really well on the questions we were practicing on. And then when I showed him the tape, it was just really mind, you know, blowing for him. So I'm finding a, a lot of value in it around communications, around interviewing, around presentations. Executive presence can be very powerful for people to see themselves on tape. So 
it's just kind of a cool tool to have in the toolkit and be able to pull it out without a lot of preparation when it's a really relevant tool, right? That, you know, you shouldn't have a tool going around like a hammer going around looking for a nail, but sometimes some of the coaching issues you may face with a client really, you know, lend themselves well to video feedback. And so I kind of feel like it's really added a nice, you know, a nice uh, tool to the toolkit and really diversified the range that I think I'm bringing as, as a coach. And we can talk a little bit about team applications uh, as well. So um, anything in the chat window, Yehudi, to comment on before we maybe push over and share a couple of slides and really dive into this a little bit more? I actually think you, um, you hit at some of the questions that people are asking about. Uh, one question around, do we need special equipment? And, you know, I think, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, there are all these devices that we carry around with us. The other great thing to think about is how much of your work is already taking place on a platform, whether it's on Skype or you may be coaching a team that often interacts through Zoom or WebEx. And so just hitting record gives you an opportunity to capture all of that as data that you could then reflect on with your client later. So. Uh, I think the special equipment is just no longer an obstacle the way it used to be 20 or 30 years ago. Right on. All right. So what we want to do then is maybe provide a bit more, uh, you know, specific. So I'm going to go ahead and share a couple slides here and Yehudi's going to kind of start us off and uh, walk us through some of these slides. So do you want to just sort of share a little bit of a high level Yehudi about, you know, sort of what does the process of video feedback look like or some of the steps? Absolutely. And I think one of the questions that just came up on the chat is, you know, the individual versus team application. And so on today's webinar, we're really going to be focusing more on individual application, working one-on-one -on -one with the client. But big picture, it's essentially the same process when working with the team. And the thinking behind this is, as Krista was mentioning, that often clients know something intellectually, but the gap between knowing something and doing something is, is really big. And often, to help ground that learning that rather than them just hearing from their 360 or from you as an external coach saying things like you have to listen more or you came in and prejudged or you were closed off to the other perspective you know it's you could hear that and you can know it in in your frontal cortex but really seeing it and being able to involve your your whole self in that realization of oh gosh i really am acting out of that reflexive place is often really critical in making sure that they're able to change their behavior moving forward. And so this little model that we put together around video feedback coaching kind of walks you through this process of what it looks like start to finish. And so on a high level, we're starting off with contracting. You know, it's really important to contract in general, but especially when you're using video, clients need to be on board. They have to feel safe. They have to understand, you know, what's happening with the video. Confidentiality is a really important thing to make sure that you cover. Sometimes with some clients, what has often been helpful is making sure that they own the video so that they know that the video isn't being, you know, um, released anywhere. Once the client's on board and they're excited to give video feedback a try and often I find that it's maybe three or four sessions into the coaching, you already have established a relationship, you've already identified goals, maybe even started working on something. And that's a really good time to bring video feedback in because it allows you to get on the court with your client and not just talk about some of the behaviors that they want to work on, but really see how are they showing up in real practice. So at that point, you could introduce it. And once they're on board, um, one of the ways I found sorry, just to go back for a second, that it's helpful to introduce it is to say something like, you know, this really will help you see your own practice and it can help us take our work to the next level. So then we move into the clarifying stage. We're really trying to understand what is the particular issue that they want to use or what's the particular area that they want to video. And so it may be a team meeting. It may be a difficult conversation that they're having with someone or that they anticipate having the next few weeks. And thinking about, well, what are their goals for that conversation? How do they want to show up? What are the behaviors they want to do? All that happens in the clarifying stage. And then in the capturing stage, you either role play it with them or actually capture the real interaction. And at that stage, what you're trying to do is just making sure that you've captured the nature of their behavior so that in the confronting stage, you're able to watch the video with them. And I know we use pretty strong language here, but the idea is not that you as the coach are confronting them, but rather that they're able to then watch the tape and be confronted by this discrepancy between their theory and use. 
you know, what they were hoping to do, what they said their goals were in the clarifying stage in terms of maybe listening or being open to multiple perspectives or facilitating a diverse conversation, and then what actually happened. And as the coach, I find often that our role is to create a safe space to normalize some of what they may see on tape and to help them take control of this process as as much as possible. When working one-on-one with a client, if we're in person, often I may say things like, you know, pause the tape when you notice something interesting, feel free to point it out. So the more they're in control of that process, the more the confronting is something that happens from the tape, not from you as a, as a coach. And then the contemplating stage, that's when we really start reflecting on, well, what did you notice? What happened on tape? How is it different from what you thought you were doing or what you were hoping to do? Where may that be coming from? And that's where a lot of the traditional coaching work comes in. And then the concretizing is when we think of some specific next steps, what could it look like on a behavioral level, and could even get into practicing those behaviors. And we could actually recontract to practice and then go through this whole process again. So in a one-hour coaching session, you may find the client goes on tape several times, the first time to kind of capture where they're at, and then the second or third time to practice the new behavior. And I found that this is a really powerful way to go very deeply with people in only an hour session. And then when you revisit it, you could keep coming on this cycle, capturing their current behavior, looking at some of the gaps, and then working on the new behaviors as well. So Krista, are there any uh, questions coming up in the chat that we should address before we jump in and watch a bit of a demo of you going through this process with Barry? Yeah, we will. I think there's you know, a question by Anna Maria, which is a good one around you know, doing um, video feedback one-on-one with one person is one thing, but if you put people in a team, what's the impact of having people on tape and would that introduce a variable that, you know, just kind of, you know, might make people feel uncomfortable or just some create some unnatural dynamic. And I would say, you know, even when you're putting somebody one-on-one on tape, you're introducing a variable. And so that's going to add something to the dynamic. I guess, you know, my experience is that, you know, um, people get over that and, you know, kind of get past it. I can share some stories a little bit later in the webinar about using it with teams. And, um, but for sure, I, I, I would say it's probably one is going to be a function of the psychological safety and the team and uh, where the team is at. But I also have found that people actually like seeing themselves on tape. So I- inversely, there's also, there can be some openness to that and, you know, it can bring something new. So I think there's some boundary conditions we can talk about around how to set the conditions up and about confidentiality and what you do with the tape and the data and all that. Um, but uh, so far, I'm not seeing as much resistance as you might, uh, might imagine. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And I think, ironically, in a way, the tape creates more safety because without the tape, often you get into you know, arguments about what happened. And sometimes some team members will experience it one way and other team members experience it the other way. And then you get into this discussion of this is what happened. No, that's not what happened. No, this is what you said. That's not what I said. And so in a way, there's something very grounding about being able to tell a team, you know, let's just look, let's see what we notice. And that creates a space for everyone to take a step back. And it's definitely not something I would do early on with a team. But once a team is used to starting to have reflective conversations about their own process, giving them a piece of tape to look at often takes it even deeper. Mm-hmm. You notice there's also a comment around using the word confronting. Um, and I kind of joked there that it would mess up the flow of all the words starting with the letter C. So, yeah. But I think in terms of confronting, you know, I guess the way I see that is that we're not necessarily confronting the client. I think the videotape confronts the client with an experience mm-hmm. of themselves, which we'll talk about. And we use the language of a discrepancy that oftentimes when a client is confronted with seeing themselves on tape, um, I've also found this when people are on podcasts or audio, when you hear yourself, it can cause a distortion or what we would call a discrepancy because the way you think you show up or even how you sound oftentimes is very different than what it is in reality. And so that discrepancy, while it's, um, it is confronting and can be jarring, also creates this incredible Uh, opportunity for coaching. So um, I think confronting is a good word. Obviously, it's a strong word. I mean, you might find if you if you prefer different, you know, terminology, I I think that's fine. But I, I've actually found it, it is kind of a confrontation. But again, it's in the service of the client. And it's not like you are as the coach, pushing that on the client, right? Um, It's they're confronting themselves in a way. 
Yeah, and I think this brings to mind that point that I believe it was David Pryor who made during the Columbia Coaching Conference about the importance of both challenging and supporting our clients. And while this model is really more of an internal model for us as coaches, not necessarily something I would share with a client, it's helpful to me to think about, am I creating an opportunity for the client to really see that gap? And I know in Biotis's model of there's that gap is a critical part of change. And Chris Argis and Donald Shuren talk a lot about the gap between our theory and use, you know, what we actually do in our espouse theory, what we say. And I find that with clients, when they're able to identify that and really own that, it's often led to a lot of learning. So, you know, this is definitely a model that I keep in mind rather than something I necessarily talk to clients about. But it's been helpful for me to think about is the piece of tape that we're capturing really giving them that opportunity to see that gap. And if it isn't, maybe that's not the right place to use tape. Yeah. I came up with another C word, which would be challenge. And uh, I'm thinking from my coach training, we, we spoke a lot about how a lot of us as coaches coach too far behind the line. We're coaching too safely. And then if we're actually really doing a good job, we're kind of challenging our clients more. And so, you know, they would always say, try to coach on the edge where, you're almost on the verge of getting fired, but not quite getting fired because if you're not really bringing that level of both support but challenge to your clients, you may not be helping them get what, they're, what they could potentially get out of coaching. And so I think a lot of us played a bit too safe and there might be more room to challenge a bit more. So that, that could be another C word as we're uh, you know, throwing options out there for folks. But all right, let's get into a little uh, example of this. And so in a moment, what I'm going to do is share with you a three and a half minute YouTube video clip of Barry coaching me. So when Yehudi and I went up to Boston and we shot some video with Barry, we decided to use me as the guinea pig. And uh, what Barry asked me to come up with was a challenging scenario, like a difficult conversation that I'd like to revisit. And so I actually had come up with a real scenario. It happened maybe a year before with somebody who I was managing at the time. And uh, the person who I was managing, let's just say we'll call him uh, Rob, I'll just come up with a name, was a real high performer. And uh, I oftentimes really just would delegate him tasks and he would always deliver ahead of schedule, you know, um, you know, overperform all the time. And so one time though, I assigned him a task in front of a client where a client asked us to produce a, a training guide for a workshop or something. And in the moment, I kind of delegated it to Rob. And, um, and what I didn't know at the time was Rob really felt uncomfortable pushing back on this assignment. Because as it turned out, he wasn't very good at writing. He was really good at facilitating and doing all kinds of work. But actually writing text and documents was not his sweet spot. And so, but in the face of the client, he didn't feel comfortable to say no. I didn't really create the space for him to really say no around this assignment or to talk about it. And he ended up taking the assignment and a couple of days before it was due, the client called me really angry saying, I just heard from Rob that the guide is only 50% done. It's due in two days. And um, so I engaged Rob around this scenario. And anyways, we had a difficult conversation and the conversation ended up turning well. And what I discovered in that conversation, although I had thought at the time that he was, you know, 100% culpable for this situation that you know, he felt like in the moment he couldn't say no and that I didn't really create an option for him. He didn't feel comfortable coming to talk to me about it because he didn't want to, you know, spoil the perception I had about him as being a high performer. And uh, so anyways, we had a great conversation about it, but I used this scenario for the role play with Barry. So Barry and I sat down, he popped open his MacBook Air and we basically got into role play. Barry assumed the role of Rob, and we had this difficult conversation, which we recorded on the MacBook. And so what we're going to pick up here in this brief video is when uh, Barry starts coaching me, showing me the tape of myself in the scenario and, you know, the coaching opportunities that come up. So this is just a really brief segment. We actually had like a whole coaching session for like an hour, which unearthed lots of really rich stuff. We're just going to give you a little bit of taste for that right now. So let me pull up the video. Let's see if I can get it here. Bear with me a second. 
And we'll make the link to this um, little demo segment available to everyone here. It's going to be on YouTube later so that if you miss it now, just you'll be able to follow up and, and see it on your own time as well. Okay, okay here we go. I'm not saying that you know, necessarily you should have tried to listen at this point, but let's take a look at the opportunity. It was okay. there that you passed on. Yeah. But, you know, I think it quite really there's more than I think that's it. That may be true, but right now the client is in. Okay. So, no, this, is, this is a classic competition of listing. You've just given data. I pride myself on not using the but I used to go on the right company. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, that's another thing. Now we could we could stop, and 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 I would stop with some clients and focus on that because it, I always always want to pick up the you you want to do and to not but right right on so I knew what it's comfortable. You're supposed to be an expert at that, by the way. <laughs> so, well, it's, it's, it's the power of the <laughs> exactly right. No, it's good to see it in action because I teach that to people, and you know I'm, I'm supposed to I try to model that and sure that you're not even using but. Good, and, I, and this is a wonderful because it shows the power in the tape, doesn't it? Yeah. Because you know that your performance is going to be online, even though we're making it. Yeah. And so it gets very close to simulating real life. That is, your yeah. emotions are heightened and your mind has yeah. to work. You know what was the biggest thing I saw, even in that first little clip, um, was I took no responsibility as a manager for my own behavior or the situation. I think that I was struck by that. Mm. That I just launched immediately into him, you know, and what he did or didn't do, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lame, right? I mean, it was interesting that I'm the manager, but I'm not actually taking any, modeling anything about responsibility. Right. Or accountability. Yeah, you could have what we would called framed or structured this quite difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you would be pretty much just mm -hmm. game. Right. Yeah. Right. So, mm. well, geez, I'm sorry, Mr. Yada, uh, but you know, I think the client really has more time than they're saying. That may be true, but right now the client is good. Okay, so as you look at it now, what is it that I seem to be saying to somebody? As a, so, in other words, if you're in the mind, if you're in the mindset where you're using the word defensive relative mm -hmm. to the other person, mm -hmm. you can only see what they do through through that lens. Right, right. And it's, it's quite possible that the other person might simply be explaining things from his mm -hmm. perspective. In mm -hmm. which case, you might come back and say, "So I've got this. I've got this wrong. Mm -hmm. you, you, you didn't screw up. It's the woman who's got such a poor sense of." Time that screwed up. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And I would have said, Yeah, I sat right up. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Uh, <laughs> so you mean if I had said, uh, if I had paraphrased back, in other words, so it sounds like your sense is that really there's actually a lot more time here than what she's leading on to. And that her calling me being angry is something else. Yes, yeah, or, or just tell me about that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, tell me about, tell me about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's an opportunity that you mm -hmm. asked so on. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, he's the butt. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, I knew these from my perspective. The problem with the butt is, is that it just meant you lose the first part mm -hmm. because the advice right. right. takes us the same way to get right. what you really want to. Well, now we already got entrenched. Yeah. All right. So let's stop that for a minute. So we're able to see that, Yudi? Um, I was able to see and hear that. It seems that Abby had some trouble. I'm not sure if other people were able to follow as well. So we'll definitely send out the YouTube clips so that people can watch it on their own time. But um, Opening this up to the group from anyone that was able to watch it and follow, what did, what did you notice or what did you see that you thought was interesting?
And it seems that Anna also had some trouble following it as well. Krista, what I was struck by was how you were able to self-identify your own behavior. You know, Susan says there were some aha moments for the coachee. Uh, Susan, say more about that. What did, what did you notice? I think it's easier to unmute versus writing. Um, I felt like it was very good to have that one-on-one -on -one moment to reflect what just happened. And obviously, Krista is a coach, so you might see a little more, oh, I just did this. This can trick it to this. So it's kind of like a um, reflection in action uh, mm. and can correct some of the next step that might happen to him. So you, you know, in a way, you can gain time, right? So you videotape, you can give feedback, and you can just um, address some, um, as you call it, the concretization. You can practice on the next step right in that moment. I like that a lot. That's a great point. And um, Kathy is also chiming in along those lines of self-identification. So Kathy, do you want to unmute yourself and just share that with the group? Yeah, hi. Um, so two things. I saw, I, I heard Christopher, you know, recognizing that he, the skills that he teaches others, he's actually using. But then I thought it was really interesting where he commented that he seemed to take no, you know, he as a manager just didn't even show up. Um, there was no responsibility on his part um, for being the manager of, of Rob. Um, and I think he was curious about that. Yeah. And Krista, there's a question here in the chat about um, how you thought you did before you watched the video. So maybe you could bring yeah. us back to that moment. I mean, it's interesting because, you know, this was, um, we chose this scenario to put on tape. And I remember when we did it that I was intentionally not trying to put all the skills I've learned in performance management and feedback and all that. I just thought, you know, let me just be natural, see what emerges, not try to be overly skilled or skilled but just really be sort of natural and see what comes to the front. And I, and I think, you know, when I went in, I remember when I went into that video, I just wanted to be authentic and honest, give the person the headline about what was going on and engage in this difficult conversation. And um, so it was really interesting because, you know, I've been teaching performance feedback and performance management to thousands of people in conflict resolution skills for 15 years. And I violated a lot of the sort of, it was a rookie mistake, you know, about, you know, really not listening, kind of using a butt. And, um, but to Kathy's point, aside from the skill stuff, the, the gap between the knowing and doing that didn't show up, you know, that, that really was revealed there was, again, this moment around, wow, as a manager, you know, I really wasn't um, taking responsibility for a situation. I was really blaming, you know, my direct report in this case. So, yeah, I think seeing that on tape was really was something I knew about and actually taught when managers give feedback when somebody is doing something that you think is really wrong or, you know, poorly, somebody's, you know, really underperforming, to even take 1% responsibility for why they might be in that situation. And, uh, and again, so it's another example of the knowing doing thing. I knew I was supposed to do that. But in the moment under pressure, you know, skills go out the window and we just kind of show up with what we got, you know, and I kind of knew better, but made these rookie mistakes. So it was kind of, uh, it was revealing. Yeah, I'm always amazed by what happens when we put people on tape. Uh, the other week I did a two day leadership development workshop, where as part of it, we put everyone on tape. And what made it so interesting is right before people role played with me, they had a three hour session on creating safe spaces and another facilitator walk them through what it means to be a learning community and be collaborative. And so they were all primed to come in and listen and be collaborative and be open. And yet, as soon as we got on tape, all the typical reflexive behaviors came up. And what was so interesting is we had 35 people come on tape that, that day and we looked at the tapes and there was a similar pattern. And I was able to pull up the slides they had looked at that morning and they had spent three hours working on creating collaborative community and talk about we all said we want to do this. We were all really on board in the morning. But when we got on tape, the behavior across the board were variations of decide privately, 
you know, make decisions privately, prejudge, come in and work on the other person rather than work with the other person. And I think they were able to see that very, very clearly, and it helped accelerate that conversation in, in a really powerful way. I love this conversation in the chat window just around the subject object notion from Keegan's developmental models. Mm. I had um, Bill Torbert, you know, who comes out of the developmental tradition as well on, the, on my podcast not long ago, and I was asking him, like, how long does it take for people to move between developmental levels? And, you know, or what he calls action logics, and he identified seven action logics. And you know, he said it usually takes people about two years to move across developmental levels. And I think it's intriguing to think about um, with video feedback, if people actually see themselves, uh, could it actually uh, elevate some of the, accelerate some of the learning there? I mean, I think my example really shows that just teaching somebody and having the knowledge of something isn't enough, that you actually need a lot of rounds of practice. And I'm thinking of an executive I was coaching a while ago who had a, a similar situation where he was facing a difficult conversation with some peers and we, we decided to do video feedback right in the moment. I didn't have any plan for that. And in one hour session, we were able to do like five rounds of practice around his scenario, stop, watch the tape, pick up a couple of things and get a lot of practice in. So it wasn't just discovering the insight and doing a round of practice, which he then would walk away in a normal coaching session and maybe practice if opportunities came up and then come back in the next session and report on, we were actually right there in the moment able to do like five rounds of feedback and coaching on a very specific skill. So I, one, that's one of the things I've found really powerful is, you know, you kind of move beyond just insight, but really can get to some real granular behavioral change and practice work right in the coaching session, which can then be augmented with, you know, a challenging application goal while, you know, in between the, the, this coaching session and the next one. Great. So before we kind of uh, wrap up, I can't believe how quickly we've burned through this hour here. What are additional questions that you guys are all curious about? So we've got some other comments coming in the chat window. I'll pick up on that, Yehudi. So Shirley saying challenge more was a great takeaway from David Matthew Pryor's breakout at the Columbia Coaching Conference. He said going beyond traditional coaching to face the facts by hyperlink. Um, so sounds like a good resource there. Yeah, I think this is something about really ratcheting up the level of challenge in service of the client, mm. uh, service of the coachee. Yep. Susan's asking if it's a hard sell to convince people to do uh, video feedback. You know, sometimes I've been surprised how far clients are willing to go. I was working with a marketing team and we were doing demos and they said, why don't we have real conversations? <laughs> and I was, I was quite surprised by that and ended up, they were game and a few pairs man agreed during the break to have conversations in front of the whole team. And so people in group, you know, dyads got up, had a conversation, we video recorded it in front of everyone, and then played it back. And they went through this reflective process in a fishbowl in front of their whole team. And that was something that came from them. It didn't even come from me. And so I think that's an extreme level of, uh, you know, a team that's really jumping into it. But you know, I've been pleasantly surprised, I would say, overall, if you have a good relationship with your client, if you make sure that confidentiality is not an issue, I've found that clients are, are pretty open to doing either a three-minute role play with you or recording a, a piece of, of a meeting or something like that. I think where it gets a little trickier is for a client to record a one-on-one -on -one with a direct report because in that case, you know, they really need them both to be on board and they have to have the kind of relationship where they're able to tell the person that this is for their own development. And so that's where it gets a little trickier. But with the role playing or the videotaping of meetings, I found it's been quite simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, I wanted to sort of respond to a, a comment just around how to introduce this with teams. And there was a question also about using it with a team assessment. So one team example I'm coming up with was a, a team, a small team of four people that was sort of having, they were kind of stuck in a period where they were just having a hard time getting traction. and one of the things that, you know, I was aware of is that the way the team members were speaking to each other was really inhibiting um, a lot of their, you know, process. And so 
during one of the sessions agreed, this was actually done virtually. So everybody was on Skype. It was a, a coaching call over Skype recorded the group, um, on the Skype call. Now it was kind of a contentious, really heated session. And, um, didn't stop to watch the tape right there online because it was an online scenario, but sent the video to the participants, asked them to watch it before the next session. And it was a real eye opener that when people actually had cooled down and went back and watched the video, they started to really see dynamics of the way how they were showing up individually or how their colleagues were showing up. And it really created a powerful moment around a lot of these folks were really experts in communication. Again, by the way, you know, the cobbler's children has no shoes phenomenon. But yet in the heat of the moment, uh, they had a hard time leveraging their skills. And so I think where this can become powerful in a team coaching session is, and it's sort of a little take, take away for, for today, is when, when you're coaching a team, one powerful modality, modality is to have the team work on a real business task. And while they're working on the business task, you also give them a learning goal. So in this case, it might be active listening or using yes and statements to build on each other's ideas rather than debating each other. And you give them basically a, a learning goal to practice in service of the task. And what oftentimes happens when people are consciously working on the learning goal in service of the business goal, they tend to perform better. And so, you know, you could use videotape to demonstrate that and show that both before and after as a discovery process. So I imagine with certain assessment tools, and I'm not sure exactly, Kathy, which assessment tools you're speaking to, uh, you could weave that in um, nicely as well. So I think it probably would depend on the type of assessment tool you're using. So that's anyway, one, one example of team application around this. But, you know, I think something Shirley said earlier is if we can get over some of the discomfort about being on tape, which I'm finding isn't huge, it can be really fun and really super powerful. So agree that it's a medium we're probably not leveraging uh, fully. Yeah, action learning. Yeah, I think that action learning point is a really great one because one of the things I'm finding from my clients is they want to learn, but they want to learn in context and they want to learn as, you know, as you said, as part of their work towards a real business goal. And so being able to embed the coaching as closely as possible to what's happening on the court, whether it's one-on-one -on -one working with the leader, whether it's with the team, and it keeps, keeps it really grounded in service of the task that they really care about. And I found that to be another kind of helpful connection here. Yeah. So you one of the questions that came up at the conference was around, you know, what, you know, what kind of training or what kind of, skill development do we need to kind of get going and what are the barriers to entry? I think for a lot of us, the technology, actually, how do you handle the technology is something that probably scares probably most people just naturally. But, you know, what's happened is with the advent of smartphones and tablets and laptops, the, the, rec the recording technology has become so good. I mean, iPhones now, iPhone 6, iPhone 7, probably even the 5, the quality of the video is so good the recording, the microphones are getting so good, you don't need a super high-tech setup. And actually, the lower tech, the better, because I think it reduces any anxiety one might have. So mm. for me, when it's face-to-face, -face, I'm using a MacBook Air, um, really easy to learn how to record in the moment. When I'm online, I'm using either Skype with a software called the Call Recorder, which costs about $30. Uh, you can use Zoom as well. Uh, so there's some, you know, different sort of technological modalities you can use. So super flexible. But I think, you know, in addition to, you know, how to do the technology and all that, I think there is a bit more to understanding the psychology behind doing video feedback coaching. And so we want to share a little bit about that uh, with you. We have developed uh, a course for folks who may want to you know, dive in a little bit deeper. But Yehudi, do you want to talk a little bit about how did I do? Uh, the technology, and we could talk a little bit about the course and start to move into the closing here. Yeah, absolutely. This is something I'm really excited about because as we've been exploring video feedback, we were able to partner with a tech startup that has built this platform, and you see a demo of one page of it up here. And essentially what it allows you to do is to upload videos directly into the platform and then to embed comments along the way. And so you see in this video, um, I'm, I'm working with someone and there's a comment embedded at 0 
you know, seconds into the movie. And what this allows you to do is to embed audio, text, or uh, video comments through the movie. And then when you're done, the client receives an email saying, you know, you've added feedback. And one of the ways I found this to be really helpful is before I was using how did I do this platform, I would record something on my laptop, I would upload it in Dropbox, then I would email it to the client um, if I wanted them to have access to it. And it, it was just very cumbersome. This is a dashboard that allows you to have all of your videos in one place. You, they could record something, they could upload it, and you can embed feedback. You could record something together, and then you could upload it so that it's there and they have a kind of history of their progress. And so for people who want to just do it themselves, I think there are a lot of great free technologies out there that you could leverage. Um, you know, like I mentioned, Dropbox and others. But if you want a comprehensive platform that's really helpful as a dashboard where it's all there, the comments are all there, the learning is all there, this is a really exciting offering. So we're working on their coaching vertical and we're going to be releasing this very soon. We're actually going to be offering it to the members of the course to experience and work with for the first month or two for free. And so those of you who join us in the course will have a chance to play with this. And what this does is it also allows you to extend how you coach. So a client could upload a video at their convenience on their time. You could look at it and embed some feedback, and then you could have your coaching call afterward. And at that point, you've already done a lot of the pre-work. And so I find it really also enables us to leverage the time that we have speaking to clients in a much more effective way. Cool. So Chris, sir, why don't you uh, take us into the, the course itself and just give people a, an overview. I know we've been working hard on this and there's a lot there. Yeah. So I think, you know, for those of you who, you know, dive in, there's really no barrier to entry. I mean, you could just pop open your phones and your tablets and your laptops and actually get going with it. You know, I think we've, we've, we dove in and with some, you know, consultation with Barry Gents have been really looking more into the psychology behind video feedback. So we've developed a course on video feedback coaching. It's a self um, directed, it's actually video based modules that walk you through. There are sort of four main modules in the course. So one is really around the what and the why of video feedback, the business case for it, really sort of understanding the rationale. We've touched on a little bit today. I think there's a, a lot more to dive into on that. We then sort of walk into just really a step by step process for how to do video feedback. So walking through each of the six steps of the model that Yehudi introduced earlier. And we've actually tried to make the course something that's uh, really interactive and practice. So in each module, you're actually getting on tape yourself, you're practicing, uh, working with video so that by the end of the course, you're comfor more comfortable with the technology so you can actually do it with real clients. Uh, we have a whole module that really gets into just overcoming the psychological hurdles. You know, you could see even just some basic things like what are the angles you need to be on when you're pulling out a laptop in a coaching session. So we get into some of the sort of just best, best practices. So, you know, when you're doing a recording, just to, what are some of the sort of rookie mistakes that you might make? Uh, we do introduce this platform that Yehudi mentioned, How Did I Do?, which creates a lot of great additional opportunities to take the feedback to another level, you know, especially in between coaching sessions. And then we end the, um, the course with just some more sort of tips and best practices of great video feedback coaches. We have a bonus section with a lot of videos of examples, uh, videos of Barry sharing stories uh, from his practice over 40 years. Barry's been working with video feedback uh, for a long time. A lot of great stories of transformation of leaders. And so we have uh, a lot of great sort of bonus stuff there. So for folks who are interested in uh, diving a little bit more uh, into this area, we are going to be start, th this courses are going to start to be drip fed out starting next week. And uh, through the course of the year, each module will come out week after week. We're going to be blending this with some group coaching. So there's some online learning you do through short video based modules, like five minute long modules. And uh, we're going to blend that with some webinars. And then in January, we're going to do an optional intensive video feedback coaching workshop. So, you know, for those of you who are interested to learn more, you know, that might be a, a good thing to check out. So again, starting next week, we're going to start this online blended learning course. And, uh, you know, folks sign up by next Wednesday when the course, the first module of the course comes live, we're going to give folks uh, a couple hundred bucks off of that. 
So if you have any questions, you can register for that at teamcoachingzone.com forward slash video feedback coaching. We also have an email here if you have any questions around that that you might want to check. If, if you have any questions, you can send those to us. Also, you know, just in the last couple of minutes, I know we have a couple of questions in the um, chat window. So I'm happy to answer any questions about the course if you want to know. I also want to leave you with a couple of resources. Uh, these are two podcasts. So one is with Barry Jens. This is episode number 46, where he dives into a lot more of the background of what led him to working with video feedback. I think you'll really enjoy that. A lot of great other tips and tools in there, though, for team coaches. And then this week, podcast with Yehudi. Uh, so a couple of you know pieces of content that you can take away as well from this session. We just briefly talk about video feedback on the podcast with, that Yehudi and I did this, that's featured this week, but uh, the one with Barry gets into that in a little bit more detail. So uh, I think with that, Yehudi, we're coming down to the, the end here, and I want to just make sure we, if there's any other questions in the chat window, we can um, respond to. Let's do that in the time we have. Also to let you know, a replay of this webinar will be available and posted at the teamcoachingzone.com forward slash webinars location where you can also check out past and uh, future webinars in case you can't attend or want to have a replay. Yeah, and just in closing, to build on what Krister said, I'd love to encourage everyone just to start playing with this. You know, if you're coaching someone, whether it's a team or an individual, and you feel like it, if only they could see themselves right now or if only they could hear themselves, think about popping open your phone or popping open your laptop and doing a little role play or capturing that in, in that moment. and you know, this is something that you could start small, find one client that you think might be a really good fit for this and start playing with it because it just gives you so much more range in your coaching. So I would love to hear, you know, if it's something that you start playing with, shoot me an email, shoot Krista an email. We'd love to hear what you've managed to discover and how you've managed to use video in your coaching. It's definitely, I think, an under tap space that we're going to be seeing a lot more about soon. Yeah. So I wanted to comment on one of the questions in the, uh, ch in the chat window by, um, I think it was by Abby, just around how do you speak about getting a team's buy-in if there's no, not a lot of trust in the team? So um, I think that's, you know, a great question. And so I actually started writing a response there, which I put in the chat window. So I think in any coaching relationship, trust in the relationship becomes really the power in coaching is in the relationship, right? And so building trust, whether that's one-on-one -on -one or, or with the team, is really essential. So I wouldn't say, and I don't know if Yehudi has a different view on this or not, I probably wouldn't come out doing video feedback coaching right out of the gate, especially in a team where there's low trust. But it may be that you need to engage the team in some trust building, you know, whether it's a team retreat. You know, I have sort of a way in a half day, I think, where I really bring, bring a lot of what creates the conditions for psychological safety in a team to a team, you know, so that we can create the conditions for team coaching, right? Um, last week, we, the team coaching zone, we just hosted a masterclass with Ruth Wagaman in New York City. And if you're familiar with Ruth's model, really a lot of strong research behind this. What she found was that when teams are well designed, then coaching a team actually becomes like a force multiplier and really helps the team take off. And so, but when a team isn't well designed or doesn't have the conditions in place for coaching, coaching is probably, and actually her research bears this out, even, you know, good coaching doesn't do a lot and bad coaching can make things really worse. And so what she speaks about are three essential conditions and three enabling conditions that really need to be in present for a team in order for a team to be coached. So I think your question raises a bigger just a bigger challenge just around when is a team ready for team coaching. And so I think, you know, video feedback is an interesting tool to bring out and it might actually aid in trust building like Yehudi saying, uh, said earlier, but I think you're kind of posted, posing a question, which is a bigger one, which is really how do we create psychological safety in a team so that they're really ready to do any kind of team coaching, not just, you know, video feedback. Mm. I think it's a great question you have. I think it's a bigger one. Yeah, that's a great point. And I think there's also a helpful differentiation between using the video to do the coaching work and also you could do it to help kind of a team self-identify or self-assess just where they're at. So I haven't done this very often, but there, there are times when you may come to a team 
record their meeting and just do something as simple as what did you guys notice? What's, where are you guys working well as a team? And where is the conversation breaking down? And using that as you know, uh, a means of data collection and then going off video and saying, okay, what do we do with this? What are our next steps? And so video does sometimes offer a chance, especially for teams that work remotely or teams that spend a lot of time on video where a lot of their meetings are on Zoom or on Skype or through some sort of platform, being able to capture some of that and then through a survey or through interviews or maybe even as a group discussion, asking people what they're noticing about the interactions could be a helpful way to start a, a session as well. Right on. So folks, I think we are, you know, just a couple minutes over the wire here. So um, just want to say thank you for coming to today's session. Again, we'll have a replay video of this and, um, you know, happy to be in touch with you following this webinar. If you have any questions, Yehudi and I can stay on for a few minutes. You know, if you have any, uh, you know, final questions or conversation you want to have. Um, and thanks for joining in today. And we hope that we hear stories about your video feedback coaching in the future. So uh, with that, I'm going to say goodbye and stop the recording. And, uh, and we can just kind of pick up any final, final questions here.